Hey, hey, hey. Taff for the Out of This World story from our space. What happens when we find out about our partner's infidelity while we're on vacation? Is it time to book that permanent vacation away from the cheating spouse? Today on our space, OB plays detective on his pursuit of happiness. Wife, 40 female, of 15 years, is almost certainly cheating on me, 40 male, on vacation with the kids. So I just kind of put the pieces together today that my wife has been cheating on me for about three or four months. Well, I don't know for certain, but like 99% sure. The other problem is, we just started a family vacation with our kids out of state. I'm torn what to do. Should I confront now, or just buck up and wait until the trip is over? Seven more days to go, and I put a lot of effort into booking this trip. I live in a non-fault divorce zone, if that makes any difference to your advice. Edit. Thanks for the advice. So I'm going to try to keep it together for the vacation, try to gather concrete evidence and start contacting a lawyer. I can see her texting him while we are doing family stuff, and I just want to grab her phone and throw it off a cliff. The big problem is that I didn't sleep more than half an hour and I don't see how I can keep it going six more days. Edit 2. Got proof on the phone. Thanks all, I really appreciate the help and guidance to a difficult time. It is amazing what a bunch of anonymous strangers can do. Here's that advice you were looking for. Gringo Mombi starts us off. I'd say keep it yourself for now. No need to ruin the vacation for your kids. That being said, you could get the ball rolling on getting a divorce lawyer, perhaps a private eye that can get some evidence of suspicious activity that had you inclined to believe she's cheating on you. The deleted user says, wouldn't do it on the vacation purely because of the kids. Definitely should confront the moment you get back. Sorry to hear, man. I can't imagine what you're going through. Stay strong. Georgia girl in the PNW says, cheating won't affect anything in a no-fault state. You can have it documented on the paperwork. My ex cheated also. Continue with the vacation, but use this time to book a consultation with a lawyer and start collecting financial documents, pay stubs, bank statements, financial records, etc. New arrival 9860 says, Get a meeting with a lawyer. Let her know that in absence of proof, you are proceeding down a path of filing for divorce. Total verifiable no contact should be a boundary, as he lost your privacy by which he decided to cheat on you and repeatedly lie to you. Make sure the lawyer knows her affair partner is a drug addict. You need to protect your kids. She's almost certainly claiming she is staying with family and friends so she can communicate with her bear partner in peace. And as you said, most likely continuing to meet him. She should be able to tell you where she is staying, but she won't as she doesn't want you finding her with him. Don't keep her secrets, but you can't count on what her family friend will do. This friend may in fact know about the affair already and be facilitating it. You also can't discount the possibility that this is a continuation of things that happened when he was her student and that this is a long-term infidelity. First of all, I'm sorry, OP. A vacation is supposed to be a time to relax and kick back. You are going to need a vacation from your vacation. I think you're receiving some solid advice on waiting before you say anything. Collect the evidence, gather yourself together, and let your kids enjoy the vacation. It just sucks that you weren't able to. Need advice. Wife, 41 female, won't stop talking to a fair partner. Although I, 40 male, asked for her to stop. I found out the truth a couple days into a family vacation with wayward wife and two kids. I posted previously in relationship advice about this. I kept things hush until we got back and had a confrontation with wayward wife after the kids were asleep. During the confrontation, she refused to admit she did anything wrong even though I was insistent that I knew something was going on. I somehow thought she would admit it, but she would not. I told her that I read her text and told her what I saw. Only then did she admit that she was having an affair, but she downplayed it by saying affair partner was a drug addict. He was young, 25 male, and a former student of hers. She's a high school teacher. They shared an emotional connection because he lost a friend, and she lost your mother a couple of years ago, and admitted that it went too far, and it got physical, and she is ashamed. It seemed like she was genuinely sorry for what she did. So yes, full emotional affair, and then physical affair. I said that I wanted her to cut it off if we have any chance of reconciliation. She did nothing that night, as it was late, and slept in a different room. The next day, I told her again that she has to cut it off and I want to witness it. She sent him a text message that was really short and said in the interest of my family we need to stop seeing each other. There was no response at that time. Pretty weak breakup in my opinion. She went to spend the night in an empty family friend's place as I said I needed space. No contact with a fair partner that evening. Well, at least my phone or text, barf. Next day, I asked if a fair partner wrote back. She said no, he didn't write back and that he won't. I told her that I don't believe that he didn't write back and that I want proof they are over. She says she doesn't want to phone him because it is already over. She refuses to let me see her phone though, as that is obviously an invasion of her privacy. 
The next day, she sends me a text saying she got a response from a fair partner with a snapshot of the text history. It was such a polite response. Okay, best of luck to you and your family. I'm certain this was a fabrication. I mean, who ends a passionate relationship like that? I was really hoping that reconciliation would be an option after initial confrontation, but this looks like full-on affair fog to me. I can't believe anything she tells me. I told her I don't buy that they can end it like that, so abrupt and polite, after the connection they had. She insists there is nothing else she can show me. I guess she is deleting your text now, so perhaps that is true. She wants to spend the night at the family friend's place again as she feels suffocated staying in the house. I'm certain they will meet. Looking for some advice or maybe reassurance on what I should do, I'm trying to arrange a meeting with a lawyer to just let her do her thing and proceed with planning for divorce. Try to bust her in the act, gather more evidence, try to get the family friend involved. Not sure if I can even trust them as close to her family. I think the fact that she's deleting her messages and saying that she feels suffocated staying in the house is a red flag. I think I would continue planning for the divorce. I'd remain cautious. Update. My D-Day was just over a month ago and I had my initial confrontation with wayward wife in the middle of July. My wife was 17 years then showed me a fake breakup text exchange with her 25-year-old affair partner and continued to talk with him. I knew it was true because I had the phone records, as people here suggested. I didn't want to disclose that fact just in case for some reason she saw the thread. So I continued to monitor and she kept talking to a fair partner quite a lot over the next two weeks, all while pretending to be working on reconciliation. And meanwhile, I had some time to contemplate what the heck I should do with my life. I was honest and said I didn't know if I wanted to reconcile or separate, but I was definitely leaning on the separate side. We've been sleeping in different rooms and staying in the same house with our kids. I've been trying to gray rock, but she really loves cornering me and trying to get me to talk. She was not doing a very good job of reconciliation. I sent her links recommended here about how cheaters can help heal the relationship, but she said it doesn't really apply, as the people it talks about did worse things than she did, and I found it way too one-sided. She continued to victim blame and kept telling so many lies. I told her I didn't believe the breakup, but she insisted it was over and didn't know how to prove it. I wonder why. I meanwhile started meeting a lawyer and individual counseling. So about a week ago, it was our wedding anniversary, and I was thinking that it would be a good symbolic gesture for confrontation number two. She got me a card and left it by my bed in the morning, but I refused to touch it. I didn't want to read any lies. I didn't get anything because seriously, what the heck is there to celebrate? Later in the day, I just told her I made up my mind and I wanted to separate. I said, I know you've been talking with a fair partner. She said, no way, it's over and he's blocked. I said, did you know that I can see a record of every phone call and text message received and sent on your phone? I know for a fact that you are talking and texting to him for hours every day, including today on our anniversary. How am I to trust anything you ever say again? So she admitted it. Yes, I have been talking, but it's not what you think. It's platonic. His aunt committed suicide. He needed someone to talk to about it. I said, you're still why? This is why I want to separate. The trust is gone. I don't care anymore if you continue to contact him. Afterwards, she was very shaken up. It has since been a week of pretty constant crying and self-pity. She's ashamed and embarrassed for what she has done and has kind of hit rock bottom. I think she finally realized the relationship with the affair partner and feelings she had were superficial and is now seeing the destruction and mess that it has caused. She could end up losing her home, losing half her time with the kids, this one hurts her especially hard, and that if the truth comes out that she will be labeled as cheater and family destroyer and lose many of her friends, and then she could face problems with her job if the truth of a fair partner comes out. She's not been telling her friends and family the truth, probably not even her therapist. She's also been telling me she has suicidal thoughts. I'm really not sure if this is true or if she's trying to manipulate me and to try it and comfort her. For some reason, I think it is the latter. I've been trying to get her family involved to help. It seems like the last week has been all about her, and I have to remind her that I too have been going to hell. She seems to think that what she's going to is worse because she now accepts that this was her fault. I'm pretty certain she finally stopped talking to a fair partner. She has said some pretty authentic sounding admissions of how she fell into the affair and was addicted to the attention and only now realizes how stupid she was. She said she didn't even think about the effect on me. That she was living two separate lives and was under the illusion that they would just stay disconnected and that it would eventually end and I would never know. I still don't know exactly how to process that. There are still a lot of details that she has refused to clear up. I don't know how long the affair lasted. I'm pretty sure it started around February and she says one or two months. She refuses to admit they had sex. I got his TI tested just in case. I really don't like that I can't get truth unless she is confronted with irrefutable evidence. This, the fake breakup texts, the months of lying, the gaslighting of marriage counseling during the affair, and lack of remorse all point me to separation as the only option. Her phone is still locked.
My end goal, though, is to be able to have an amicable separation with joint custody and keep the door slightly ajar for possible reconciliation down the road. You probably wonder why, but this whole episode is very out of character for her. I very much believe that she was suffering from depression and that she was partially taken advantage of. I want to give her the chance to fix herself, but she needs to do it on her own and I need space and time to see if I can ever forgive her. The problems are we still live together and I do care about her and definitely want her to get help and not kill herself. I think a lot of her problem is fear of unknown and ripping apart her codependency, which has kept our home so stable until now. Part of me fears this as well. Should I just check her into a mental institution or should I be offering more support? Have other wayward partners acted in a similar way when their affair fog is lifted and put all the attention on themselves? I'm guessing so because narcissists be narcissists. Anyone have experience with nesting arrangements where spouses take turns in the matrimonial home? That's the end of my rant. Thanks for reading. Sometimes people just spew things out of their mouths in order for the partner who was cheated on to just be manipulated all over again. Rather than actively working on the relationship with you and working on reconciling, she's playing the victim. It sounds like she's just upset she got caught. Update. As a recap, I'm currently going through the separation divorce process but still living together with wayward wife in the matrimonial home. We have two kids. D-Day was about two months ago. See my old posts for details. I've had two major confrontations and she only admits anything if I have concrete proof. My wayward wife has been continuing to contact and see her fair partner even though she swears it's over. I'm done with believing her at this point, but part of me really wants to find out and know the truth. I mean, don't I deserve to know? Won't it provide peace of mind? So anyways, I was stooping through an old tablet and found some conversations that were still active. She is definitely talking with an affair partner, but the name doesn't match the name I had before. The old affair partner had a Facebook account, a texting phone number, and was a former student. I only had proof of them being in contact for a couple of months, but my gut told me it was longer. This guy is older, 50 plus, and as I can tell from reading the conversation, is much more, um, real and believable. I found out so many details. Looks like they met through work somehow. He's moving back into town. He knows about me and knows her co-workers. He's divorced. He's been helping guide her through the divorce process. Oh yeah, and it has apparently been going on for three effing years. This has hit me way harder than I thought it could. We are already in the process of separation, and I've accepted our relationship is over. Why does this feel so horrible? This is feeling like D-Day all over again. I don't think she had two affairs. The conversations only started up again after I exposed her the last time. Seems like a fair partner constructed a fake account to communicate on. Why would she tell me it was a former student? I mean, maybe that fake account was actually a former student's name, and she has had to go with that excuse. Maybe the former student is actually a clue as to the origins of the relationship. The fair partner specifically called out these three wonderful years, so I think they're knowing each other dates back even further. It definitely puts into question everything that's occurred in the last year and longer. I am furious at my wayward wife. I have not told her yet, I know, and she will go to the grade before she openly tells me. What the F happened in my life? A brief update. I was re-examining my evidence of a bear bar number one, and I am now pretty sure that he is indeed a different person than a bear partner number two. I think a bear partner number one was a fling on the side and is legit over, whereas a bear partner number two was more an emotional affair that has been going on for years and maybe just recently got physical. Make me wonder how many more. What the F? It feels horrible because it is a horrible situation that no one expects to be in. People expect a loyal partner and a committed relationship. You couldn't have guessed that the twine would have unraveled this far. Seven months post D-Day update. So it has been about six months since my last update and seven months since D-Day. And I've had multiple people poke me for an update. So here it goes. Quick summary. I was on vacation this summer and found a definitive proof my wife was cheating on me. Then, after confronting, she fate to break up with a fair partner and continued to see him. After confronting again with new proof, I requested divorce. Then shortly thereafter, I found out she had a second fair partner on the go for three plus years. We have two kids in middle school and were married 17 years. I didn't really have an, any major breakthroughs since my last post. By the time I had figured out there were two affair partners, at least, it basically convinced me that divorce was the only option and I didn't need any more information. This was when I knew I could never trust her again. So these past six months have been working through getting a separation agreement and learning how to fall out of love. I should note that it was my initiative to proceed with divorce. She approached me multiple times over the course of the six months to ask me to reconsider, but she never demonstrated any true remorse. I think she was just scared of losing her safety net and thought I was too. She kept saying to remember the good years and to stop thinking in black and white. 
But this was a clear violation of my boundaries, and I don't see how I could ever trust her again. I refuse to be a doormat. I refuse to sweep her behavior under the rug. I never publicly outed her behavior. I really wanted to at times, but I don't think it gains me anything. I prefer to move forward constructively as I know that she will remain in my life as mother of my kids, whether I like it or not. We decided to use a mediator in accommodation with personal lawyers in an attempt to avoid the court system and get a faster and less expensive deal. The process was not super fast, but mostly because she would delay because she didn't really want to proceed and thought I would reconsider. It took about four months from choosing the mediator until our agreement was signed, got 50-50 and a pretty fair payout to help jumpstart my new life and keep most of my assets. It did, however, require being amicable enough and willing to sit through and discuss issues without losing our temper. Mostly good on this front. We were living together the entire time, in separate bedrooms, obviously, and I was making good use of the Grey Rock strategy and would avoid conversation unless absolutely necessary. After initially having problems with her continuing to go on nights out with friends at random without notice, we agreed upon an alternate night schedule so we could better plan our out-of-the-house activities. I used my time to start meeting up with some old friends, do old hobbies, and starting some new hobbies, basically working on myself. I had been keeping my eye on the real estate as we decided that she would buy me out of the home. Too much of the matrimonial home was full of her design decisions and stuff, and they didn't have a strong attachment to many of these things, so I felt it would be better for me to get a fresh start. Around the end of the year, it was evident that our agreement was really close, so I started seriously looking for a new place, and one came up on the market that was a perfect fit. In the same school zone, so I bought it after consulting with a lawyer. The agreement was signed on January and I moved into my new place in February. Talking with some friends who went to the courts, it sounds like I got out pretty easy. Waiting two to four years before an agreement seems pretty common here with crazy lawyer fees. It has been a pretty smooth adjustment to life on my own thus far. My head feels so much better not having to be in her presence every day. The kids are doing well and are excited to have a new place half the time. Breaking myself free of codependence after 20 years living together has not been as hard as I feared. I don't really care what my ex does anymore. Although the day I moved out was super hard on her. She was such a wreck that she called me over to pick up some stuff. I forgot, but it was actually a trap to talk to me. She confessed that she had seen a fair barter over one the other day and that he owed her money and she asked for it back and he attacked her and gave her a bruise on her arm. I told her I was sorry and that she should charge him with assault. I had to buy the kids some fast food as she basically could not function or feed them. I left afterwards back to my own place. I haven't heard any follow-up, so I don't think she did anything. I don't know what is real or not. I'm pretty sure my kids are safe when they are with her. She has not exposed them to anyone yet, and I was able to get that written into our agreement. My main interactions now with X are all kid-related and financial-related. Stuff like dropping off kids' extracurricular equipment weekly or sharing kids' expenses. I don't find myself reading the subreddit much anymore as I moved on to divorce subreddits, and now, more recently, dating subreddits. I think it may be ready to start dating again. I've been pursuing a few interests, and this has been exciting, although not successful yet. I'm not sure if I even have time to date, as I've been keeping super busy with my hobbies. But I feel very comfortable with myself, and I don't know how to explain it, but it feels like I may be ready. The best way to explain it is that in my interactions with people, I no longer feel as though I'm faking my own happiness, and I think this makes it easier to connect with new people. So that is my update. Thanks to all who have commented on my previous posts. This community has done a phenomenal job of keeping my head straight through this entire process. Infidelity is such a brutal blow, but I honestly feel like I'm coming out of this as a better and stronger person than I was before. It sounds like you're well in your way, OP. I'm proud of you for saying that you refuse to be a doormat. I think that's such a remarkable act of self-love and self-respect. It's amazing how great we can feel and how life changes for the better when we're not around toxic people. We're in a whole new chapter of your life and it sounds like there's a lot of promise here. Feeling happy is wonderful when we aren't faking it, isn't it? Best wishes, OP. What do you think? Do you have a similar story? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on our space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there.